So then, all right. After that one, we uh, we did go up to 4-2 because Baggio throws uh, easy win from Chris's rage quit. And what the actual hell is going on here? Chris is not playing as green. He's playing as he's playing as stone colored. He's actually playing as grey. But okay, wow. Uh, so Chris playing as uh, Huns over to the seven o'clock. Uh, no, four o'clock position. Wow, I can't even put the numbers on a clock. <laughs> four o'clock position um, as Huns in grey. And uh, we do have VNS Badger throw in blue up to the north, uh, playing as Huns in blue. And uh, this map is Team Islands. And uh, oh man, I can't believe how quickly Chris GG'd on that last one. It was obviously a rage quit. Um, there was no reason for him to really quit at that stage unless he was kind of just frustrated and flustered a little bit. I think, you know, it's quite a big loss, but it's not something you can you can't come back from. Badger Ifro might have made some mistakes as well for what Chris knows. Um but I guess he just didn't want to bother playing it out if he knew that he would probably end up losing in the wrong run anyway. So um Chris GG did it and that makes Badger Ifro go to four two. Sorry, Chris go to four two. Uh, but this map should be interesting. We did see the uh, game yesterday between Eddie and uh, and the other guy. I can't even remember his username, to be honest. I casted that many games yesterday. Byrie, I think it was. Uh, when they were playing on Team Islands as well. And uh, Eddie did a fast castle and uh, with as Aztecs. And then did the fire ships, took the water control, landed his opponent, and then went with... Um, with monks and I think Team Islands lends itself very well to a landing because of how large the islands actually are. Uh, in Team Islands you don't get any uh, straggler islands uh, as I call them or little gold islands for instance in the center it is just two large land masses and uh, they are pretty huge so spotting a landing is quite important and you'll see players perhaps build houses around the shoreline or maybe even some outposts just to be on the safe side if they think they're going to get landed once they've lost water. But once they do lose water, it's definitely not over. It's not the case of, oh, I've lost water, the game's over now. Um, because it is possible to still land your opponent back, because the map is pretty large. There is a large amount of water, and you've got a lot of coastline to hide docks on as well. Um, for instance, you know, if, if your opponent is if your opponent's got a few docks, uh, sorry, galleys spread out on the front, you can easily go and dock on the back and put a castle up or something to try and protect it. So it's not the case where in islands, if you lose the water, it's almost certainly GG. You've actually got a chance at coming back on Team Islands. So I do think Team Islands is a good map to watch, and um, we'll see how it goes. Again, I'm going to speed things up just a little bit through the Dark Age. They're both playing as hunts, so it could be very possible that we see a landing with cavalry archers. As I think Byrie did yesterday, actually, in in the Eddie versus Byrie game, and uh, yeah, I'm interested to see how this one goes. I hope the players do attempt a landing, and uh, of course, using Scout to lure deer as well, which is a nice idea. It's uh, it saves villager working time, um, and it also, well, your scout's not really going to be doing much once you've uh, got off your island anyway. Uh, sorry, once you've explored your island, so you may as well lure your uh, boar with it as well as uh, sending some deer back to the TC by luring them with the scout. It makes a very good all-purpose food magnet. I'll call it a food magnet. Alright, so uh, Badger Fro putting his dock on the front, and it's not unusual to see front docks. Obviously Chris doing the same here, and they've both docked like exactly opposite to each other. Back docking can be a little risky on this map, because whilst yes, there are quite a lot of fish in the, in the, in the water, there's not even actually that many fish in the back to begin with, but uh, back docking is risky because, well, if you put your dock on the back, by the time you've got your uh, units round to the front, your galleys round to the front, um, you, the opponent could have already landed you because they could have just gone a transport ship and sent some villagers across. So docking on the front is kind of important in Team Islands because you need to see the front of the map and keep an eye on your opponent and make sure they're not going to be trying to do uh, any sneaky landings on you and uh, and try and catch you off guard. So. There's no doubt that both of them are going to try and take water control, but water control isn't everything, um, as I'm sure we will see. Bad is sending three villagers over to gold right now as he is getting ready to go, well, he is up to the feudal age, and Chris sending over four. I think Bad might send over another one. It's pretty common to see four villagers going over to gold, because that does help with um, doing four docks. 
and also adding some extras in a little bit later so that you can sustain dot produ uh, sorry gallop production and get up to castle and get fletching really really important uh, upgrades for the uh, for, for water maps but Jeffro goes up first Chris slightly further behind uh, but Chris has already got his third dock up so Bajofro might not actually be able to get this dock up in time and Chris will be producing from three docks Bajofro just from the two for the time being so even though Chris got up second he should still have more galleys out on the water first so uh, it's not always about just um, speed at which you upgrade it's also obviously demonstrated here uh, it's the speed at which you get your docks up and get your galleys out as well so there we go the third uh, dock going up for Bajofro and does. Uh, it's going to be pretty neck and neck for a while, I think, here. Two galleys out already for Badge. We might just call him nicknaming Badge. <laughs> Badge has got two docks, uh, sorry, two galleys out, and uh, Chris is about to have three. More queued up, of course. And uh, he's seen this dock right here, he knows exactly where Chris is. And he's going to send his galleys right over there to try and perhaps pick off some fishing ships. And there we see the fourth dock from Chris going up, and I'm not really surprised at that at all. Looks like Badgeofro has moved his dock builder away, and she might actually not go for, or he might actually not go for the fourth dock at all. Uh, we'll see if Badgeofro sees the fourth dock, in which case he will either A, add a, a, th a fourth dock, or B, know that he's going to lose the water and try and do a landing. So uh, we'll see what he plans here. Obviously, three docks against four is never such a good idea, as uh, you are much more likely to lose water in that situation but uh, right now Chris is going to have to retreat a little bit as he is slightly outnumbered until he again can produce another wave of docks or another round of docks from sorry another round of ships or galleys why do I keep saying docks you don't make docks out of docks uh, for another round of galleys out of these docks and so uh, yeah there we go another load coming out and uh, it's going to be pretty back and forth on the water for a while I think until um, until one of them ends up getting some some nice picks and they'll try to just micro as much as they can to try and just take out as many galleys as they can and there we see Badgerofro adding his fourth dock in he might assume that Chris has got four he might have just been planning to go for four all along anyway but he did send that villager away to make use of her time rather than uh, just having her standing around Usually you'd use your dock builder to build houses as well, but in this case uh, you can't exactly do that as uh, as your huns, and you don't have houses. But uh, I don't think adding that fourth dock later is really going to really going to make too much of a difference. Um, I doubt Chris would have been able to sustain galley production from all four to begin with anyway. And although he is doing that right now, Badgerfro is still going to get his fourth up, and he's still going to be creating uh, galleys at a reasonable rate, I think. There's certainly no reason why he shouldn't be able to, but it does look like he's getting a little bit behind in ships already. Chris had a pretty good start there, and uh, he definitely got off to the most efficient start and the most efficient uh, beginning with using his galleys. So uh, Chris is just going to try and pick some galleys off, as, well, as many galleys off as he can. You see both of them trying to micro as much as they can to avoid as much arrow fire as they can, and uh, ultimately just get the upper hand where possible. I think they are very very neck and neck at the moment on the water and there we see the blacksmith from Badgerofro as well. He can just about afford fletching. Um, he will need to get a mill on here and yeah obviously <laughs> sending Philly. There we go. Mill on there. He can afford fletching. He's going to do it straight away. It's going to delay his uh, next villager just slightly because obviously he had to build that mill which is uh, meaning that these villagers aren't gathering quite so much berries but there we go now we can get it and um, yeah it's it's going pretty well for Badgerfro Chris going pretty well as well it's pretty much a standard build up so far and Chris just adding his blacksmith now so he's going to get a later plus one and uh, we'll see if Badgerfro can make use of that plus one here trying to launch a little bit of an attack and you can see Chris trying to just move out of his way slightly coming back and forth back and forth and as I said it's going to be very back and forth until things sort of stabilize and one person really does get the upper hand um, but at this stage it's really crucial that you keep as many galleys alive as possible and uh, a micro as well as possible as well certainly looks like Chris has the most but he's going to hang back still a little bit until he does get his plus one and that's going to be done in just a second Bacho Fro going to engage real quick Chris gonna pull out of the way again and now it looks like he might just be going for it because plus one's about to finish and there it is so he's gonna go for it right now and uh, now it seems like it's Bajofro who might actually be trying to retreat just a little bit nice little pick on that one there though 
Chris uh, let him that one free, and, uh, and, it, and it died. It came into existence, and it was wiped from existence in nearly the same second. But Chris now, I think, going to keep pushing forwards, because I think he senses, and he knows he's got the upper hand on the water here. Uh, not bad micro from either of them, trying to avoid as many volleys of arrows as they can. Um, and Bacho for attack with the full length of his ships there. Chris just kind of attacking with the ones on the front, which is never a, such a good idea. We were saying yesterday about it's much as much about positioning as it is about moving your ships back and forth. And I'd actually say Bacho for came better off in that trade there. Um, ship wise, it's so so close, and it's going to take a while before. Uh, one person really does start to get the upper hand in any way. Of course, the castle age time really will affect things here. Now, the first to go up to castle will really gain a big advantage as long as they don't lose their um, too many ships on the water. So at this stage, we're here already. Chris and Badger are starting to add in some farms so they can get that extra food and get up to the castle age. And uh, a, some nice micro from Badger for here actually. He's managing to take a few ships out from Chris. And then again, as is Chris, they're both playing this pretty evenly, to say the least. But uh, Chris there taking three at the very least for absolutely nothing. And uh, Badger for his next wave of ships coming in. And we'll actually have a look at the actual figures here. Uh, Badger for on 15. Chris is on 15 as well. Is I identical neck, neck and neck and as I said it's going to be going back and forth a little bit back and forth. But Jeffrey has the highest score though. Um, I don't know if that's because he's scouted more of his island or if he's just simply got a better economy at the moment um, but he's certainly ahead in score. Chris uh, is just scouting his island now so um, maybe it's to, down to scouting. Um, well wow, Badgerfro hasn't even explored his whole island here. Chris on the other hand still not explored his whole island so I guess yeah it's must just be down to Badjo for his eco here, or maybe just uh, units killed. Uh, he might have actually killed more units than Chris, but Chris has just managed to replenish them faster, hence why he's got the same amount of docks. Looks like uh, he's just lost a few there though. 13 right now, Badjo for, um, 15 even, Badjo for on 15. It's still very, very close, and as I said, still going to be very back and forth, so we'll keep an eye on what happens on the water. But uh, more importantly, there is the, uh, the little the deal with going up to the castle age. Bad Jeffrey is just adding in his market right now, so that's a good indicator that he's planning to go up to castle sometime in the near future. He needs a little bit more food. He's got plenty of gold saved up, and he's not queuing. Uh, not, yeah, he wasn't queuing a galley from here. He can't actually afford it. He's not got the wood for it at the moment. But uh, yeah, he just needs a little, bit, a little bit more food. He's got enough villagers on the gold, just so he's got 200 gold uh, by the time he's ready to go up. And he's actually, oh yes, this is really nice actually, uh, managing to get a few uh, ships from Chris right there. And it looks like he is starting to gain a little bit of an upper hand in the water. Uh, managing to pick another one, getting out of the way in time. And might get another one here. Oh, so close, but extra damage done. And uh, if you just damage them, even if you don't take them out, the more damage you do in general, the easier they're going to be able to defeat in the long run. So, um, Jeffrey just losing another ship there. And I don't really know if uh, Chris is targeting down the weaker ships or not. It's kind of hard to select the ships in here and see exactly which ones are weaker. But Chris there managed to get another three for two, and then Chris losing another one. So still, it's extremely back and forth. Chris does seem to be trading here quite well though, and uh, it's now 16 to Chris's 15, and it's still so close. So we'll have a look real quick at what Chris is doing back over at his eco, still making some more farms, and looking at his resources, that's 500 food, 200 gold, Badgerfro on 600 food, 200 gold, Badgerfro could go up to the castle age slightly faster, it could happen. And if he does go up slightly faster, then he's going to gain a little bit of an upper hand. But neither of them really taking the, a huge advantage here on the water so far. Looks like Chris might continue to push forwards a little here. But Jeffrey just pulling back slightly. But uh, it is really close. And um, the first person to go up to Castle and uh, get up to War Galley and Bodkin Arrow is really in a huge, huge advantage. As if they've got enough ships alive, they will actually be able to take out some docks. And that is what really hurts, taking out the docks. Uh, but as we see, Badgerfro and Chris losing so many ships. I mean, they were up to like 15 each. Now down to 10 for like both of them now. Um, Chris on 9. So uh, well, now 11 because they keep building them. But uh, yeah, it is so neck and neck. And uh, I think Badgerfro might be up to Castle first. He's just clicked up right now. And Chris is on 670 food. So he's going to be slightly further behind. He's got a little bit more gold in the bank. 
and uh, we actually have a look here. Chris has, let's have a quick look, three, six, eight gold miners. Bajofro has just the six. And I think those extra gold miners means that Chris has got extra gold, but he doesn't quite have as much food, and that has slowed him down up to the castle age. And Bajofro here is going to go up to the castle age first, but oh, Chris is pinning him in, and he's trying to just take as many galleys out as he can. And it looks like Bajofro is actually going to get wiped off the water here, and that is surprising. It was so, so close, but there we go. Chris managed to turn that around. Again, a huge advantage. He obviously did more damage over time to Bajofro's ships. Bajofro maybe, just maybe, didn't make ships for a little while whilst uh, whilst he was getting ready to go up to the Castle Age, and because of that, Chris managed to take the upper hand. Both still on four docks, though, and uh, Bajofro now going to try and take out these fishing ships, or well, as is Chris, to be fair. Uh, they're both going to try and do the same there, but Bajofro won't give on up on water just yet. He is going to keep making galleys, I think, here, and he will upgrade to War Galley and get Bodkin Arrow as soon as he goes up to the Castle Age, but he has got quite a big gap to gain. He is adding in another two docks, and the thing is here, he's got an advantage that he's going to be going up to the castle first. Uh, Chris has just clicked up right now, so he's going to have uh, you know, a, a minute and a half to actually get as much as many ships out as he can and kill as many ships as Chris has because by the time Chris upgrades to War Galley and Bodkin Arrow he's gonna wanna have the same amount if not more ships and the problem is he just lost all of his ships and um, that is not good so uh, he's adding in a couple more docks here and as is Chris about to Chris is just about to as well so uh, Badgerofro just trying to get enough ships out here and Chris is going to try and attack the docks he's not really going to be able to do too much he could just about get one down but uh, Badgerofro is still going to make those galleys and now he's going to go up to the castle age and this one possibly going to make up the oh no he's doing it over here war galley upgrade and the Bodkin Arrow as soon as he can afford it just a second he will go for Bodkin Arrow and try and take out as many galleys as he can from Chris. Chris now, though, has got a huge amount of galleys, and Chris is always strong on water maps. He's got 20 galleys out at the moment, and uh, we've seen it already through the GML. Chris has played some extremely good water maps. He's most certainly a good water map player. So uh, Badgerofro is going to have a hard time here, I think. He is just about to upgrade War Galley though, and a demolition ship coming in. This is nice. It's not very often you see demolition ships, but I guess they can catch your opponent right off guard. Because if your opponent's attacking your docks, a demolition ship comes out, and then boom, all of those ships have just been blown up. So uh, actually making a couple of demo ships here. Let's see if Badgerofro can actually do anything with that. That will be really cool, because uh, Chris never knows when these uh, units are actually going to come out of the dock here. So it could be, it could catch him off guard, and he could actually manage to take out a lot of galleys with that. We'll be interested to see. Uh, we'll find out very shortly, I'm sure. Chris about to go up to Castle. There's the demo ship. Chris has seen them, <laughs> so he knows it's coming. I don't think Badger was expecting to do that, and he's don't want to waste them. Blowing up one ship is obviously not enough. But Chris is, uh, sorry, Badger definitely has the upper hand here. Trading one ship for one ship, probably not quite worth it. He's not even going to take that one out. Kind of a little bit of a waste of the demo ships there. Maybe it was a little bit of a misclick. Uh, I thought maybe he'd just try and sneak out on uh, Chris and do some as much splash damage as he could. But Chris now up to the Castle Age. It's only a matter of time before War Galley is completed. And uh, Chris is still going to pick this fight because he knows he's got the upper hand in numbers. And uh, Badger for still doesn't have plus two either which does mean that his advantage isn't actually that huge. Chris here, although he has um, only galleys against war galleys, um, the difference isn't so huge that he isn't going to fight this because he has got the upper hand. And it looks like Badgerofro could end up losing water here as Chris is about to upgrade to war galley. But I think Bodkin Arrow is probably going to be done sooner than Badgerofro at this rate as well. Um, it's on 88, well 90% right now. Badgerofro has not even started it and uh, Chris is going to have a huge advantage here as uh, plus two is complete and war galley is about to complete as well so Chris is definitely going to take the water now what's Badgerofro going to do I mean, his option here is to put a dock perhaps on the side and send a quick landing or a couple of villagers over to Chris's side Chris then uh, will find himself um, in the position where he's got a load of ships 
but he doesn't have anything on land to combat that, so he might prepare himself for it, because Badgerfer, of course, won't be making any more ships unless he really is desperate to take the water back. He's make, yeah, he's stopped making war galleys pretty much. He's making a couple of demolition ships still. I don't know if that is just a misclick or or what, but because I mean he could have like control D to go to dock and then D is the hotkey for demolition ship so if you press control D and then you press D again um, it will cure demolition ship up so I don't know if these are misclicks or if he's actually planning on doing that but either way Badger could go for a landing here but he isn't going to take water now as he has stopped creating do um, galleys altogether and Chris has got a huge upper hand. Chris now of course though can start adding some fishing ships in as long as he takes out these docks and make sure Badger Fro doesn't come along with some fire ships later on to take them out or something. So uh, Chris is going to make sure he's got the water. What he'll also want to do is spread his war galleys around the outside of Badgerfro's island so that he can uh, keep a close eye on what he's doing and make sure that he doesn't uh, create any docks anywhere else. Because of course if he does make a dock somewhere else, that way Chris will see it and he can dispatch of it real quick. So Chris in a really nice situation here and uh, he's just making another TC on the front might add another TC in Prelude soon as well, but one thing he might want to do now is probably prepare for a landing attack, um, or even prepare to land Badgerfro actually, because uh, Badgerfro can actually survive for quite a while on his uh, main island, but if he gets up a castle, he can secure some area of the coastline. If he puts a castle here for instance, that's going to secure most of this choke point, and docks could all be in this area and over here, so it could be the case that Badjofro can still pull it back. I mean, the scores of difference is huge, but that's mainly just because Chris has a lot more military on the map at the moment and he's killed a lot more units. But the, uh, the, the actual island that you've got, it has a lot of gold on it, it's got lots of uh, resources as well, and Badjofro isn't going to run out of resources for a while, so he could just boom up, try and get uh, an eco advantage, and then try and Chris, uh, catch Chris off guard. It looks like Chris is not actually going to spot this dock. He's just uh, sent some ships straight past it, and that's one nice thing of having this little uh, this little indent here. It kind of means that Chris would have to scout inside, and yeah, he's going to see it. He's not that stupid. He is going to check this, and uh, he is going to see this dock. So, Bajiofro has been found out. He might lose his fishing ships as well. We'll see about that. But uh, yeah, he's just going to work on his eco here and try and close the gap with the Ecos. Just researching Bosaur right now, a little late actually. Um, sometimes, well, usually you're going to want to get Bosaur straight away as soon as you reach Castle, but then again, he was pretty desperate to get out those galleys, so I can see why he delayed it a little bit. But also going with a four t fourth TC now, so he is going to do a really big boom, just try and get his Eco going strong and, uh, and try and just bridge the gap that way. We'll see what happens. Chris might decide to try and land him real quick, and, uh, and and cut the game short. We'll see if he's making any transports. Uh, no, not just yet. But if he does, then uh, he could catch Badgerfro off guard there as well. But uh, both of them up to three TCs. Badgerfro adding in his fourth, and he'll try, I think, and just boom up and boom up and get get ahead in eco, and then do something to try and come back into the game. We'll see if that works out or not for him. His uh, docks on the front getting killed off though. It does mean that he is going to have to build a castle at some point in order to defend his shoreline and shelter his docks under. Uh, there's no way that Chris will be able to take out the docks if there's a castle behind it. Because castles, do you have an attack bonus versus war galleys and uh, galleons and galleys? Uh, they are just generally strong against boats, apart from cannon galleons, which outrange them and then they die. But uh, but yeah, Badgerfro going with his fourth TC, Chris just with the three. So I mean, Badgerfro could start to pull ahead a little bit with his eco here. Bear in mind, 100% of his attention is going to be on this boom here, and Chris's attention is also going to be used up um, moving his, uh, his galleys around. So see if he can actually pull ahead. I'm going to speed things up a little bit here because booming isn't always that interesting to watch. Sending a few villages over to Stone, that's uh, because he's going to get this castle and we'll keep an eye out and see where he actually puts that castle and how much uh, stone he manages to get. And we'll see exactly what Chris is doing. We see a barracks from him right here, a siege workshop as well and an archery range. So I don't know if he's ready, getting ready for Chris to land him. It could be the case that Chris is going to do a landing. It could also be the case that Chris is just going to go Imperial and then just, I don't know, stick around on the shoreline and starve Badger throw out, I guess you could say. 
Uh, but Badger here has to do something here, so we'll see. He could have something up his sleeve. Um, or this could just be there in case Chris lands him. Alright, we see a couple of cavalry archers coming out. Looks like he might be preparing to go and drop some cavalry archers on Chris's base, which could work if he just gets a dock out of Chris's sightline. If he puts a dock on the back, Chris might see it eventually, but if he can get the transport ship out quick enough or do it under the shelter of a castle, then he might be able to do it. He might be able to get away with it. So we'll keep an eye on that indeed. Um, but Chris, of course, now has got a lot of ships out. He's got a lot of water control. He's going to be able to see most of what's coming. And of course, if, if Chris stops the transport ship from landing, then all the units inside are going to be lost as well, which is never such a good thing. See, it looks like Bad Joffrey might actually go Imperial here. Uh, he might go up to Imp before doing anything. He's almost got the food and the gold for it, so I mean he could do just that. And uh, if he goes up to Imp, it's not going to give him any major benefits, but he is going to do it anyway. He's going to get the eco bonuses. Chris is almost up to Imp as well. I'm not really surprised he went up that fast because he still has some fishers. He still worked on his eco a little earlier. He wasn't having to uh, play catch up like Bad Joffre was. So oh, there we go. We see the castle on the end right there. Can he get it up? If he gets this castle up, he will secure the coastline, but he is losing a lot of villagers to the galleys here, and if he doesn't get this castle up, then uh, he may just resign, but it looks like he's gonna... Oh no, he's not gonna do it. And Bad Joffro just lost so many villagers there. He spent all that time trying to catch up in Eco, and now he finds himself losing all of those villagers. So that is certainly not good. Stable's going up on this side. I don't know if he's playing anything funny with that. But uh, just, he just wanted to get that castle up. Chris isn't going to let it happen. And uh, as long as Chris keeps him on his island and sort of starves him out, there really isn't a lot Bad Joffre can do to get off of his island and actually make anything of it. Let's see if Chris is actually making any attempts to land or anything. He's recharging Galleon. No surprises there. Um, but that's about it. University, no upgrades coming in just yet. I imagine he's already got ballistics. But, um, yeah, he's not too happy about this castle. And uh, he might actually end up taking this game and oh yep yeah, there we see a landing as well I didn't get wow <laughs> because it's gray you don't actually see it on the map I mean that is such a annoying color to spot I much prefer it in the Forgotten Empires where it's dark gray but Chris has got a landing over on Bad Jirifro here he's sent some villagers over he's built a load of archery ranges he's built stables he's recharging some bloodlines right now like cavalry is done as well and he's gonna raid Bad Jirifro's base with cavalry archers and I think Bad Joffre will be in a position here to resign because at the end of the day this castle didn't go up. Chris has got galleons right now. He's raiding Bad Joffre's base with light cavalry and cavalry archers and that's kind of a big deal. Bad Joffre on 107 population. Chris on 150 right now and uh, Chris is going to keep the raiding going I think and, and he's in such a great position because of this. Uh, Bad Joffre can hit from all angles on the shore. He, might, he can even hit this TC I think. Oh no he can't. It's just out of range. But uh, even so Chris has got every advantage right here and I would not be surprised in the slightest if uh, Bad Joffre gives it one push with his units he's got saved up here and then perhaps GG's it. He's going to use this uh, battering ram though to distract the ships and get his castle up. Is it going to work? Oh, it doesn't look like it's going to work. Oh, the castle just goes up. Well, that is a bit of a relief. He does get the castle up at the cost of losing a load more villagers. He did just lose a load more, load more over here. And Bad Joffre's population has fell down to 103 right now. Chris is keeping the units coming. And as long as he keeps the flood up, and if he adds some siege as well, which he should do, um, then he has no reason really to lose this game. Bad Joffre has got the castle, though, and he has he's making the docks. So let's see what he can do. I mean, the thing is, though, now, he can make these docks. All right, that's fair enough. If he makes a transport ship, well, the galleons are here. He hasn't got the galleon upgrade just yet. He hasn't got any galleys, so he's going to have to take ages to actually build them. And by the time he's done that, it's just going to be it's going to be too late because his eco is going to be raided. He's going to find himself with no villagers left. And uh, I think this is soon to be GG for Bad Joffre here. Um, Again, as I said, Chris, 180 population, Bad Joffre falling, less than 100 right now, and Chris can just stop anything from happening over there, and there we see Bad Joffre's GG, uh, making it 5-2 to Chris so far. There are more games coming up.